This might be something of a rarity for us. It's not really fire and brimstone -y type stuff. You don't see that much around here. Actually, you probably could never categorize or characterize anything we teach as being of the firestone, what firestone, brimstone, fire type teaching. But we do believe that there is a place after this life where God is not. Hell is just as good a word as anything. And I want to, not so much as a warning, but just something for you to think about. I think it's good to think about these things because we need to get them from God. So we meditate, we contemplate, we take them to Him. And if He lives within you, He's approximate to you. So you should get those answers fairly soon. Not always, but it's a good bet if you really want to understand or at least get, get the understanding to the way that it's helpful to you he will provide that for you so that's why i want to share this this slightly brimstony and fiery message so the notion of hell as i would see it is as follows is not in the literal sense but i believe the bible illustrates things in dramatic ways it really does it's clear that it does that not all of it can be literal. It conveys a literal message that God wants us to understand, but it does it in those allegorical ways or metaphorical ways and through parables and things like that in a very dramatic sense because I think that is part of showing who he is. He is very expressive and there are certain things he really, really, really wants us to know and understand. So when we think about hell, we have all these ones that man is then taking a run with and pitchforks and all this stuff and it dramatizes it and I think a lot of people get turned off by religion because they think that's what people literally believe and some people do literally believe that I don't literally believe that but I think in some ways what it really is might be worse than pitchforks and fire and all that and I'll tell you why we uh, as people know what it's like to be sorry we know what it's like to hurt someone, to do something regretful, to do something that you can never take back. It's like, and I did that, and there's nothing I'm ever gonna be able to do. They can forgive me all they want, and sometimes they're already gone, they passed away, or they vowed never to forgive us, but I think either way, even the forgiveness can't really totally take away the stain, because we know, you know, you know you did that, and there's nothing you can do about it. We all know what that feels like, whether you have God's forgiveness or believe in it or not. You know what it feels like to have those type of feelings. So that said, I want to read a couple of scriptures. One is from Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 and 22. It says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. And the Lord shall reward thee. I don't want to focus on that last part. I want to focus on that first part of the second verse. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Now clearly, this is not literal. And again, like I say, some people might say, I'd rather have literal coals on my head than the guilt I feel about things I've done in my life. So this is very expressive and it's also very accurate. And the reason why I use it, Paul then paraphrases that in Romans chapter 20 verse 20 I mean chapter 12 verse 20 he says therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him if he thirst give him drink for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head you notice it doesn't include and you shall be reward, rewarded that was an old covenant type of concept do something for the rewards now we already have the reward you already have the love of your God so go ahead and be kind to that one that's being evil to you. Go ahead and do it because what's it to you? What's it to you that he's being mean to you and evil towards you? It doesn't matter to you. You have the love of your God. And, and to the extent that we have the love of our God, we can respond like that. If you don't, that's fine. We just, you know, just know it. I don't have the love of my God yet. I hate my enemies. It doesn't mean you're condemned. It just means you haven't grown yet. And that's fine. We all need to grow and mature. So it's not a command to love your enemies now so that you can get this reward. It's just a reality that you will love them once you see how much you're loved. 
but that's kind of a side issue. What I want to refer to here is this notion that that is not only an Old Testament or Old Covenant notion, it is very much in the New, because Paul was so much embracing an understanding of the New Covenant that he had arguments with the apostles, with the elders in Jerusalem, with the people that walk with Jesus. They were more legalist than him, and he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. So he says, do this. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Not for just no reason, not just so he can say, hey, I got that guy. He's sitting there with hot coals on his head. But so you can save him from something. I'm talking about people that don't know God. If it's someone who knows God and he calls on their head, it's for a different reason. But in the context of what I start out with, the notion of hell. Hell would be that type of spiritual thing. In other words, once you get to hell, the things that you rejected here, they, all of us know deep down. And I'm not going to call you a liar if you say you don't know it or that's not true, Mark. But you will know it someday. You will know the following you all know that you were offered the perfect love and kindness of your God. You were. Just by the fact that you exist, that is evidence alone. That is evidence enough to know that you were offered the kindness of your Creator. You have a Creator. He created you. Enough said. But there's so much more. And if you would have sought Him, and you would have found out, and you would have seen that kindness and that love, that the Creator would actually come here and give His life for you, become like you, and pay the price that you deserve to pay for the things that you have done. That you would reject that. And that would be your eternal state of knowing that. Of knowing that your creator was so kind. Was so gentle. Was so tender. Was so loving. Was so forgiving. Perfectly forgiving. Took away all your sins. And to know that you are now separated from him. Not by your sins. Not by your evil deeds or whatever it is religion tells you or the world teaches you or you decide to believe when you rejected him. But you're, you're where you are forever because you decided not to simply get to know this kind one. This loving one. This one who gave you life and then offered you life eternal. His very heart, his very self, his life. That's the life he gave for you, knowing you could reject it. And all the things connected to that, all the thoughts that would be connected to that, that's what the people in hell, I believe, will spend eternity thinking about. The what ifs, the now I can'ts, the how kind is he, the how good he is he. And they might respond in rage and anger, I don't know. But some I imagine will respond in regret and they'll be sad and there'll be nothing they'll be able to do about it. It'll be final. That'll be it. Never to have an opportunity ever to know him because he has given sufficient opportunity for all of us to do that. You may disagree with that. I understand that. I, I used to wonder about it myself, but I believe he's a just God. And just because you're not hearing my voice or you haven't heard another message like this just look at the world it's evidence enough just behold it just really look at it just look at creation look at where you are this is a beautiful creation made by a beautiful god and we should at some point in our lives say who are you i want to know who you are and that's all it basically is that starts the journey because then he will reveal himself and then you will know him and then you won't find yourself in that position of eternal questioning and regretting and what ifing and saying if only I had. That's what it is. It's not pitchforks and being tormented by demons and devils in that sense. It, I'm sure it will be them tormenting because they'll be telling you, wow, you blew it. You had the chance. You believe lies. Whether it's the lies of the world or lies of religion, you believed that your God is something he's not. And you didn't just get to know him as a person, as the person, as the one that you could have known forever. And that's something to think about. In Jesus' name, amen.